Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On this program, Reverend Mabley's nephew, Gordon Mooney, shares his testimony. Our musical guest is Rosemary Blair, and Reverend Mabley's sermon is titled, Doing Kingdom Administration Through Prayer. Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Gordon Mooney. Praise the Lord. Today on Eternally Yours Telecast, I get one of my relatives to interview. And I'm just delighted about this because I love this young man so much. And as being my nephew, uh, my sister's son, and uh, being a man of God who goes to our fellowship on a regular basis. I know, folks, you're going to enjoy him and what God has done in and through his life. So open your hearts to hear this most sincere young man as I welcome him to Eternally Yours. Welcome, Gordon Mooney. Hi, Auntie. It's so good to have you here. You always call me Auntie, so respectful, ever since you were little. <laughs> I'll even though now I'm your pastor. <laughs> yes. Let's hear how the Lord Jesus got hold of your life from the time you were a young lad. Well, he's always been there, but uh, so many different denominations on the planet, it's up to each individual uh, I've always been saying this to friends and family and strangers that uh, there's so many different denominations on the planet. We've got to take, well, you had given me the ultim ultimatum also when I was younger. That oh, because your parents were? were uh, JWs, your, yes. Your grandparent was even a preacher. Jeho that's right. In Jehovah Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the background. Okay. Right, and then when I ended up, you know, coming to 16, 17, being pulled from a child to an adult, um, you had told me, how do I know that my parents' as parents had found the right religion that God had provided on earth? If there was only one religion, what would that religion be? You told me, I have to take the time out to find that religion, and I have to take the time out to ask Him to lead my footsteps to it through prayer. And I didn't want to hear your religion or anybody else's because I was, you know, feeling content, but as I, you know, time progressed after I prayed for that, and I realized that uh, uh, things weren't right in the, in the JWs. I wasn't feeling comfortable going there in the clothes I was wearing, and uh, there were certain other churches that it seemed like it didn't really matter, and I felt, didn't feel, I felt distant as I was getting older. So when you told me that I had to stop going to churches and literally take the time out and ask him t to lead my footsteps to the right religion that he would have provided here on earth if there was no such thing as religion, uh, evil, if there was only his one and only love and one and only lead my footsteps to it. So I did that and I took the time out. And uh, that was only around when I was 15 going into 16 and when I did find Jesus and gave my heart to him and realized that he was my savior, I was 16. And uh, it changed everything. Uh, I was on, uh, there was no other high the planet or mankind can offer. Jesus uh, was, was the way and I ended up, gave my heart to him and let him know that I believe in, that he is my savior. And I, I knew at that moment that he was germinating a seed into my heart for for us for me to get to know him personally and for me to grow in a christian life but i felt the crossroad and i like i said i gave my heart to him satan was really working on me not to walk the walk and talk the talk and go to a christian uh, church and have christian wife and christian children and lead an ever happy christian life uh, I, I was walking the walk and talking the talk and, and very on fire for the Lord for about three months. And then, uh, you know, feeling Satan hucking certain, certain uh, uh, things at me where I wanted to go and hang out with my brothers and friends. And I felt like I was being distant from being a Christian and walking the walk but I was always talking the talk. And uh, I never let that go. I've always bubbled uh, about the Lord all my life. And, uh, 
and you know feeling like he was in my calling and and certain moments for certain people in certain areas of my life they needed to hear it whether they knew it or not certain things that he has told me to tell them for those moments and uh, one of the things growing up was comfortable zone sometimes we get caught in our comfortable zone and we don't want to move from it and change is a hard thing for people uh, and you met a young lady so let's hear about that that's right and uh, I ended up let the Lord know instead of meeting a Christian girl and going to church and leading a Christian life I wanted to hang out with my brothers and friends and meet a girl that didn't know him and uh, uh, gain her soul and be with her eternally and I, I met a girl I prayed that I would have a girlfriend young uh, and have a boy first and then some years later have a girl and be with that girl immortally. And uh, um, it's, it's, the prayers have been answered right through. I met a girl when I was twi uh, 21 and she was 19. And next thing you know, we had a son. Uh, I was 22 and, and uh, we've been together for uh, 24 years. Um, we've had our ups and Did downs. Did you come to know Christ? Uh, in her own way, it just doesn't seem like some things she are as... She as you, on fire Yeah, you just some mm -hmm. things don't seem as quick to And she's on people. your case to, to, walk, to walk the talk more. That's right. Live uh, uh, the example of the things that I'm talking now, about. Now, Gordon, one of the reasons I have you on the telecast is because so often the television ministries, they interview people where everything in their life is just roses, you know. Everything is going good. I wanted you to come on the telecast because I want you to share for a few moments as we come to the close of this, this pro program, uh, the testimonial part for you, dear one. I wanted you to share about your struggles because there's a lot of Christians out there that they're struggling. And if every time they see on television, the lives are all, oh, the Lord came in my life and everything is wonderful and away we go, you know, yes. like uh, happy, happy ever after in Christ. And it doesn't always happen that way. So could you please share some of your struggles as you're still walking with the Lord? Uh, you're talking the talk a lot. I know you very well. You're always talking about the Lord, which is wonderful. And you talk to Him, which is wonderful. You have a good relationship with God. Uh, in, in a small way, you remind me of another fellow named David Fink. When he talks to God, it's, it's, so, it's so sweet. He'll say... Uh, what are you saying, dude? <laughs> Unreal. But anyway, it's the same thing. It's just his walk. But anyway, I want you to share about some of the struggles that you have uh, trying to uh, to walk the talk. Well, they say uh, they say I, I knew that day when I when I left being a Christian and back started backsliding, and I haven't really been back there like that since then. So 100%. I have 100 percent exactly. So I've been struggling and not leading a, a complete, uh, like you say, uh, with so many people. Uh, we all like to make out on the outside that uh, we are living up to the Lord's expectations mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, brought into His home. Uh, I feel that I haven't been. Uh, I've been backsliding for a lot of years, but. I've asked the Lord to use the good in the wrong that I'm doing. Find the good in the wrong that I'm doing, no matter what. And use me in those areas. Put me in areas where most, some Christians that are on the up and up wouldn't be. And I felt Him using me in those areas. It was like, okay, you want to go down that road? I'm going to put you on some stuff. And he did. And I told people certain things that they needed to hear at the time in certain places. Booze cans, uh, four or five in the morning, talking about the Lord. Uh, I felt that they were on the verge of committing suicide the next day. I think I, I, I said some things to them that changed their world. The same thing as me not being on the up and up where a lot of people are... are holding back from their lives because they're seeing me not being put in where I'm supposed to be in my life. 
But uh, I'm just another struggling person that goes to church, tries to read, read the Word every evening. And uh, um, as I get older, I feel me getting closer and things diminishing as I would do when I was younger. Uh, so are you really saying, really, that um, in, in your not being 100% the way you really think God wants you to be, you're kind of asking God, have mercy on me, use me anyway. That's right. Okay, and what is happening in your relationship with Him is He's using you in any case in His mercy and love. And what is it that's making you draw closer and deeper and stronger to Him? Just explain about your relationship well, in that it, area. Well, it's time. And, and like I said, when I was younger, I prayed to the Lord to have me not caught up in the world, to have my mind caught on Him. So I would think to Him and contemplate things to Him in my everyday. So I'm not fretting on my yesterdays. I'm not worrying about my tomorrows. I want my every morning and my every day to be thinking unto Him. So first I start with a prayer for my day, to be with my ethics and my ingenuity and my job, mm -hmm. to have me not caught up in my work and to have me caught up in Him and things that are in my day. So when I would g further years and further years, uh, I, I would be getting closer because of that. And that's how I got to know Him so personal through those every days, having myself caught up in Him and not the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's been easier and easier. Now that I'm older, I've got to know him in every aspect, uh, but I'm still waiting to come back to my crossroad where I've got to give him my all, and he's waiting. He's just waiting. Patiently. And patiently, and I thank mm -hmm. him so much for that because his time is still I, I you know I, I I just feel that I'm getting closer and closer every day I want to say something in coming to a close to comfort your heart and the viewers out there that are kind of around where he is that this is the way I see it and I believe I have God's leading is that what really Gordon Mooney you have very very high expectations of what God expects in and through your life and you are openly saying, I'm just not there, but I'm doing my best on the road. And I'm asking God to use me on the road, even though I'm still making mistakes. Yes. And so I think that God help you and those watching to be careful, to don't be too hard on yourselves when you're not like Jesus today. Knowing that, take a deep breath of relief, you are God's workmanship, right? Gordon, Amen. just take yes. a, Oh, it's God that's working in me to will and do of His yes. good pleasure. Yes. And what we have to do, it's as simple as this. Christianity is not difficult. It's not complicated in this point. We yield His clay, and the Holy Spirit works in us to make us more like Jesus. From day to day, strength to strength, faith to faith, getting stronger and stronger, in our weaknesses become His strength. And he will do that as you yield to him and do what this young man, my nephew, is doing. Read the word, pray, and go to fellowship where the anointed word is preached. Yes. And if you have problems finding a, a local church, do give us a call. You need to be in a place where the word of God is preached. And when you come and hear the word of God, doesn't it bless you so? Mm -hmm. You need that place just a sailing in the Holy it's Ghost. It's <laughs> a re-energizing re 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 uh, uh, for, for a new week before us. Yes. So have hope, be of good courage, no matter where you're at in your walk with God. And I was challenged to bring someone on the telecast that didn't really seem to have it all together in his understanding, but I'm thinking you have it more together than you think. <laughs> God bless Thank you, you Gordon you. Mooney. Uh, shining as Christ lights in the Mooney clan, a uh, very big clan in my family, our family and my brother in Christ. And I honor Christ in you and thank you for being on the telecast. Thank you too. God bless you. Amen. I'm free. I'm free indeed. I'm free. I'm royalty. Since my Jesus saved me in new life, He gave me free. I'm free indeed. I was living life according to man, forgotten all about God. Savior
song, I'm free, I'm free, I hope you are too, and I am free <laughs> through my Lord Jesus Christ. Whomsoever the Son of God, Lord Jesus Christ, sets free is free indeed. I've been freed by so many things and healed by so many things. Oh, it's incredible. But my message is not about that today. My message from my heart in Christ to your heart is kingdom doing, kingdom administration through prayer. Do you realize that? If you pray, you can do kingdom from God Almighty, his kingdom come, kingdom administration here on earth through prayer. Never estimate the power of prayer. Scripture says that one a thousand flee to ten thousand. So when you got a whole group praying, wow, <laughs> I love that verse. And the word of God says, where two or more are gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I am there. And it only takes two to impact things even all around the world. Lord Jesus said, whatsoever you agree in the name of the Lord Jesus, I will do. Whatever you agree. So two people can agree. Hallelujah. I really love and know the power of prayer. In fact, I've actually had to pray because I have so much confidence in prayer that I said, Lord, give me greater confidence than I have in prayer <laughs> in you who answers the prayer. Because <laughs> the people that are praying, they're not the great ones. It's the greater one is he who answers those prayers. Amen. So I really would say to you that kingdom administration, God has chosen to move greatly on planet Earth in answer to prayer. I mean, God can just say anything and it will happen because God spoke the whole world into existence, right? It says so in the book of Genesis. So God can have, and he could just make it so that every person on planet Earth bow and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. But God wants us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord because we realize he loves us. We realize he loves us. And we bow out of love, not because we have to. What I'm trying to say is God is all-powerful. God is everywhere. God is all-knowing. And when I say that, I like to think of this. God knows everything about you and I we've ever done wrong and ever will do wrong, and he still loves us. Isn't that awesome? God of love that made heaven and earth and you and me for his pleasure. And this God Almighty that can do anything you can't say that about Satan. No one has a power like God Almighty. And so this God, who is all-powerful, has chosen to move on planet Earth greatly through the prayer of his children. Kingdom administration administered through prayer. In Luke 9, 16 to 17, when Jesus, the disciples had come to him and said, there's thousands of people here. What should we do, Jesus? We have no food for them. And so he said, what do you have at hand? A few loaves of bread and a few fishes. And so what did Jesus do about the fishes and the loaves and the need? He prayed. Listen to the word. Luke 9, 16, 17. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes and he looked up to heaven. That's up to prayer. He blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples and set before the multitudes and they ate and were filled and 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Provision through prayer. See, Jesus' whole walk on planet earth was an example. Holy Jesus, the sinless one, God in the flesh, giving us an example of a perfect person. By the Holy Spirit, we do our best in life as we become Christians to live up to what Jesus would do and and he's in and through and with us to help us by the Holy Spirit. 
But the thing of the matter is, some people have said, how could it be that Jesus Christ is God Almighty, always has been, always will be, and yet he's on earth and he's praying, and he's praying to the Holy Father. Is he praying to himself? I want to tell you what I think is the answer to that. We'll know more clearly probably in eternity future. But to me, it is this. Philippians chapter 2 says, Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, he emptied himself of using his power as God Almighty. And he took, he humbled himself, took the form of a human being. And I believe that was for two great reasons, perhaps more, but I know of two. One is so that as a human being without sin, he could die on the cross for our sins, take our place. Hallelujah. And two is to show us how to live a perfect life. He led a holy life in human form. And he is our example. In John, thir book of John chapter 13, it said, Jesus, when he washed the disciples' feet, he said, I give you an example. His whole, whole life was an example. So now the glorified Jesus, once again, is exercising his power as God Almighty. This is the understanding I have. Whether you can accept it or agree with it or not, we could disagree in love. And so Luke 11, 1 to 10, it came to pass as Jesus was praying in a certain place when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So I was thinking about that. They call it the Lord's Prayer. Many people around the world know the Lord's Prayer. And you see, why would they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, teach us to pray? Because they know that every time Jesus prayed, the miraculous happened. When he multiplied the fishes and the loaves and holding them up to the Father, <laughs> they multiplied. So they said, oh, Jesus, you really know how to pray. You're our example. Teach us how to pray. And so he gave them the Lord's Prayer. And that, that prayer encompasses everything for your life and mine. First of all, we honor the Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Can you see that? That connection with kingdom administration through prayer? We are to pray, your kingdom come in our lives, in our situations, in our nations, in our country, in this world. Thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, because his kingdom is reigning in heaven. And then he says, give us this day our daily bread. What we need for this day, wisdom, strength, food, clothing, shelter. And then, and very important, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. God doesn't hear sinners as much as he does hear those that follow him righteously. Oh, I'm not saying he won't listen to a sinner's cry for help, but forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. Unforgiveness will give place to the demonic and evil and troubles and sickness even. So be quick to forgive. What helps me forgive is I think, I want to forgive as quick as I want to be forgiven when I make a mistake, and no one's perfect but my Lord Jesus. And so forgive us our trespasses. That's in the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because there's a lot of evil out there. You know it, I know it. There's a lot out there everywhere you go. There's evil. You hear it on the news. But the, Lord, the Word of God says, pray. Deliver us from evil. So kingdom administration can be manifest on earth. The rule of the living, loving God Almighty who made heaven and earth and you and me for his pleasure. God wants his kingdom to rule down here through our prayers as he answers our prayers, wonderful holy God, as it is in heaven. There's no war in heaven. There's peace, tranquility, love, joy, laughter. I'm going there, hallelujah. There's streets of gold. Hallelujah. That's where I'm going. I hope you're going there too. If you need help to become a Christian, phone in the prayer line. Someone will help you. you need help following the Lord, they'll help you. If you need prayer for healing, they'll pray for you. Guaranteed, and someone is praying for you right now. While this telecast is on, someone is praying for you, precious ones. And so the Lord's Prayer, very powerful for kingdom administration to come here on earth. Now, what if you are in a small fellowship and uh, you don't have a whole lot of people praying for you and with you? Be encouraged. Twelve people affected the whole world, and it's still happening. <laughs> Twelve disciples of Jesus, amen? So scripture says, 1 Samuel 22, verse 2, people were in distress, they were in debt, they were discontented, but they didn't stay that way. These dear ones became the mighty men of David. 
Through prayer, you can ask Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of war, the God of the armies of heaven, to fight for you and have kingdom administration happening in your life, in your situations. God wants you and I to be people of prayer. Won't you pray and love the Lord? In Jesus' holy name, amen. Beloved ones, as I've been sharing with you about kingdom administration here on planet Earth through prayer, I know that if you've been watching, you've probably been strongly convicted you haven't prayed enough. Who really prays enough? Except our Lord Jesus when he walked the earth. But really, there is a sin of prayerlessness. That what shall you do about that? Ask God to forgive you. If you haven't been a people of prayer, just say, Father in heaven, forgive me the sin of prayerlessness. Because there are many, many things in your life, those dear to you, even the country where you live, that could be happening if we would just be people of prayer. God is looking for people who pray. I really pray a fair amount. I don't know if I pray enough, only God knows. But I'll tell you one thing I want to share. To some people, I believe with all my heart, will truly have earned a crown of perseverance. Here with your hearts, do believe in the Lord Jesus. You've been believing God for years and decades and praying and praying. I know the scripture says that uh, hope deferred makes a heart sick, but you know where to go. If you've got any heart sickness, go to Christ. He will heal you. I'm going to hopefully there'll be time in the next few minutes that we can pray for any heart sick folks watching. But what I want to say to you to encourage you is this. If you persevere, persevere in prayer, Persevere in believing God, believing His Word, and press on to know the Lord. He will build your faith muscle, and I believe you'll earn a crown of perseverance. I believe I've earned that myself. If not, I think close to it. And just think of the joy we're having at tossing that crown at Jesus' feet. And also, precious ones, I want to share with you, there's a big breakthrough that took about 30 years to come. And then the Lord showed me. He showed me a vision of a bowl beautiful, beautiful bowl, and it was full, and it was being tipped, and down was flowing the blessings. And I knew what it meant. It meant the prayer bowl was full, and the blessings were coming down. If you look in Revelations 3, 8, Revelations 5, uh, 3 to 8, it talks about that. Angel, our prayers are like an incense unto God, into the prayer bowls and the altar of God, and angels are sent to bring the answer. And even if it seems to take so long, just persevere in prayer. Let's pray together, shall we? Just say, Heavenly Father, forgive me the sin of prayerlessness. Forgive me where I've not believed and held fast to your word and faith. Help me do better by the Holy Spirit. Help me be a person of prayer and persevere when I need to. This I pray. And oh God, heal any heart sick one watching. Give them hope. God of hope fill you with peace and joy in believing you may bound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' holy name, amen.